Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, the equation of the ellipse. And there's two different types of equations we have for an ellipse. One that has a horizontal axis that, or a major axis that is horizontal, and our major axis is vertical. Um, so we need to be able to determine that to help us graph it. But the first thing we want to do is get it at least into that standard form so we can determine where A and B are going to be. So all of our equations for ellipse are equal to 1. And this is equal to 36. So I need to get rid of the 36. So I will divide by 36 on both sides. Now remember, when you're dividing an expression by a number, that's, that 36 divides into both of these. So therefore, I have 9x nine, nine squared divided by 36 plus 4y squared divided by 36, and that equals to 1. OK, so now I see I have some fractions over here that I can reduce. Um, so I can divide out a 9 from the top and the bottom, and I get x squared over 4. And here, I can divide out a 4 from the top and bottom, and I get y squared over 9 equals 1. So now this looks a little bit more familiar in our standard form. Now, when we're dealing with ellipses, um, remember, we have an a squared and a b squared, right? Where a represents the distance from the center to your verti um, vertices, and b represents the distance from the center to your covertices. a is always going to be larger. It's always going to be larger to your vertices than it is to your covertices. So, the larger number is going to be our a. All right? And when our a is under our y squared, we know that our major axis is going to be vertical. So the next thing is, let's go ahead and determine our center. Now, the center, well, actually, let's go and see. So that's a squared, and that's b squared. So I can say a squared equals 9, b squared equals 4. Now, we don't know what c squared is, but I'll show you how to find it. Um, the next thing is, let's figure out the center. The center is h comma k. And our standard form would be, um, since we know that it's in this, since we have it with a major axis that is vertical, we can say x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. So our vertex is h comma k. But you can see I'm not subtracting anything from the x and the y. So therefore, our center in this problem is going to be 0, 0. All right. Now, I know, remember that the major axis, the vertices, as well as the foci and the center, all lie on a vertical um, major axis, which has to go through the center. So therefore, you can see our major axis is going to be the y-axis in this case. Now, to solve, if a squared equals 9, that means a is equal to 3. So from my center, to find my vertices, I just need to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And then I can go down 3, 1, 2, 3. Because A is an absolute distance from your center to your vertices. B is going to be distance from the covertices. So therefore, by taking the square root of both sides, I can say B equals 2. Covertices. All right. Um, the last thing to graph is we need to be able to determine the foci. And the foci is C squared. Well, we have a relationship between a squared, b squared, and c squared. And that relationship for ellipses is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And I know a squared and b squared. So c squared equals 9 minus 4. c squared equals 5. So c squared equals 5. That means c equals the square root of 5. Now, square root of 5, you can uh, use the decimal approximation. But you don't really have to. I mean. When I'm graphing this, I'm, I'm not going to be as exact, because that's an irrational number. So the square root of 5, I know it's going to be anywhere between 2 and 3, right? Because 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. So the square root of 5 is going to be 2 and a decimal, right? And, that, and that's really all we want to do is 1, 2, and just kind of estimate. There's going to be one foci, and there's going to be the other foci, all right? So now I have enough information to graph the ellipse as I just connect the um, the covertices and the vertices. Um, however, I would like to be able to identify what, is the, what are actually the exact coordinates. And it's nice when you have a center at the, um, a center at the origin, because to find everything, I just need to count from there. So the vertices. Um, now remember, the vertices, though, since they're on the major axis, I'm just going to go, uh, let's see, it's distant of 3. So it's going to be 0, 3, 0, negative 3. Um, for the foci, foci is square root of 5, right? So it's going to be 0 square root of 5, comma, 0 comma, negative square root of 5. And then the covertices 
are now going to be left and right. So that's going to be, um, that's distance negative 2. So negative 2, 0, and um, 2, comma 0. And the last thing I always want you guys to notice about this is notice that the center, the vertices, and the foci all have the same x-axis, or all have the same x-coordinate of 0. The reason why is they all lie on that major axis, which is vertical, which is the y-axis, which has an x-coordinate of 0, um, or an x-value of 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your ellipse. Thanks.